Okay, so I know that many of you are interested in more of like a leadership position or administrative type stuff or basically just being a boss. You know, like there are some of us that want to kind of run things. And um, as a PA, you know, you are under the impression that, oh, okay, you know, we're working under a physician, you know, you you gotta like do what the, the physician is saying. Um, and so the question was asked, like can PAs actually like run stuff? Can they be in administrative roles and in leadership positions? Like how can they grow in their career? So that is the question I will be answering for you today. What's up you guys, it's Adana, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, thank you so much for joining me today. I welcome you, please go ahead, take a look around my channel because I have a lot to offer. This question that I'm gonna be answering for you guys today um, is from Nadia Porter. Before I get into that though, I do wanna say if you have participated in the giveaway, okay, I was doing a giveaway for my PA students. If you have participated in that, the winner will be announced later on today around three o'clock um, so please you guys be sure to pay attention to that video it will be coming out on this channel at three o'clock today I will be announcing the winner of the giveaway so if you want to make sure that you are not missing out and you were the winner and you were the one that was chosen then you better come back at 3 p.m. today okay now let's get to Nadia's question so Nadia said, Hi Adana, I've been taking the MD path my whole life, but ever since I learned about the PA profession a few months ago, my path is shifting. Well, welcome to the team, girl. Um, she says, I really enjoy your videos and am leaning more PA than MD. I know that PAs must work under the licensing of a physician. I'm just wondering though, what are some ways that PAs can grow within their career? Do PAs ever take on leadership slash management roles? As this may not be important now when you first start as a PA, but once you become a seasoned PA, let's say with 10 plus years of experience, of patient care experience, it may become important as one gets older. You may or may not have addressed this question in old videos, but I haven't really heard anything regarding this question from your videos or any other videos I've watched on YouTube yet. Thanks for your time. All right, Nadia, so lots to unpack in there. And, um, you know, I, the, we, we're just gonna like start from the beginning. So I know that you addressed the fact that you said PAs must work under the licensing of a physician. So that's not exactly true. We have our own license, you know, we have our own licensing body. I have to be licensed. I had to get certified and then get my own Maryland license. So I work under my own license. All right. When it comes to collaborating with a physician, we do have to have collaborating physicians. So yes, there is like a physician that we're kind of collaborating that gives us like the delegation agreement that says yes like you know the PA will be able to do all of these various different things um, you know I'm gonna train them to do that and they're working with me in conjunction with me so that is like first things first um, we work together with the physician we're not working under their license per se okay so I just want to clear that up now with respect to can you get into management positions or leadership positions and how can you grow in your career I mean there are several ways that you can grow in your career and it all depends on what you want to do in the future so there are lots of PAs that go into leadership and management positions in AAPA um, or like ARCPA, which is our accreditation body um, and just our overall body of PA legislation. So there are PAs that go into that route. Um, there are PAs that go into leadership roles in NCCPA, which is more so like the commission for the PAs that deals with our testing and making sure that our certification is up to, you know, up to par and, and right. Um, it deals with all of our like pan re, which is our re certification and our pants, which is our initial certification to become PAs. And then there are PAs that are in leadership roles with respect to education, and that will be in PAEA. So those are like your large educational bodies um, and just institutional bodies in the PA realm of things where PAs can have that leadership and management role. 
Now, apart from that, again, if it's if you don't want to necessarily be impatient, there are roles for that. But if you still want to be impatient and be in a leadership role, there are head PAs. So there are the PAs that are like the head of OBGYN or trauma or orthopedics or, you know, neurosurgery. And, and that is a leadership position. Um, they are the main PA over all of the other PAs underneath them. They, you know, deal with scheduling and all of that stuff. Um, they're the ones that go to upper management with any grievances that we may have or you know they get all of the information from upper management on how things may be dictated and so that is another position that PAs can grow in your career you know as a baby PA like me I'm not necessarily going to be the head PA um, I, I just started so with respect to that I have to work my way up to that okay if that's something that I'm interested in uh, not something that I'm interested in, but if it were, that is what I would be doing, okay? Um, another way that PAs can grow in their career and you know become in leadership positions is by being the head PA at that hospital. So uh, there is a PA that is over all of the other PAs um, at my hospital. He deals with all administrative stuff. He does not really do any like practice, like inpatient, like care stuff um it's all administrative so lots of meetings lots of like delegations hiring and firing you know um making sure that our you know what we're able to do is up to date uh making sure that our credentials are up to date all of that stuff and so all of just like the sitting down behind the desk and being a boss type of stuff that is what he does um so there are opportunities for that you know just kind of like how there are like nurse educators and things like that that are circulating through the hospital he pretty much does the same thing you know he's there and he's making sure that um all of our all of the pas underneath him that work in the hospital are are right and tight okay that we are doing what we need to do and we're making he's making sure that all of the things that we may be interested in or may have a problem with like he's the one that we bring it to and he talks to all of the other like uh, attendings or, or leaders in the trauma team and emergency medicine team and all of the other um, areas that PAs are working he's he's our advocate so that is um, a way like inpatient, I guess you could say that PAs go into leadership. Another way that PAs go into leadership is through um, PA education. <clears throat> so if you are interested in PA education, you can become a professor at a PA school or, you know, a professor at any school or however you want to do that. Um, that is a way that you can, you know, mold the, the fresh young minds that are coming up underneath you. Um, also, you can be a program director. And so uh, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of PAs that um, are, you know, continuing to be, I guess, more seasoned, I guess you could say, have been working in in, in inpatient or even outpatient, um, but direct patient care for a long period of time have transitioned into the more education sector of things. Sometimes they still do a little bit of inpatient stuff on the side just to keep their skills up to date, but a lot of them are in education and so they become program directors, they become um, professors. I know that there are some PAs that are actually like directors of facilities. So they are directors of like free clinics um, in various different states and cities. And so that's another way. But there are lots of ways, Nadia, that you can actually become uh, a leader and you can grow in this PA career. Uh, and if there's a way that you haven't heard of or that you're interested in, just carve that way out. I know that it may be difficult or it may be a long road or a hard, but you know, we're young and we have time to do that. So you can make your own path. As the PA profession continues to get more and more and more traction and more people learn about it, like through, you know, YouTube, like this channel that you guys have subscribed to, to help my YouTube algorithm out, or through Instagram, we have a nice, you know, YouTube and Instagram community about PAs out there or LinkedIn or whatever, you know, hopefully we get some news traction, whatever it may be, as more and more PAs are, are become known, uh, the profession is going to go further and there are going to be more opportunities for us to even have more leadership roles um, and carve our own path out. So I am very much... Um, 
I guess you could say hopeful for the future, but there are lots of ways right now at the moment that you can become a leader, okay? So hopefully that answered your question. Um, please, you guys, continue to leave your questions in the comment section below. I do read them. You see I make videos on them. This helps me out a lot because I don't necessarily have to rack my brain all the time to figure out like what's fresh in you and what you guys wanna hear. So leave those comments for me. Follow me on Instagram at it on the PA and on Instagram at get that C university. Okay, you guys check us out. I get this university.com to see what we have to offer. And uh, if you guys haven't already done so go ahead and subscribe, you know, join the family. Welcome to the team. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.